Well, it says it's streaming. It says we oh, we have audio. Excellent. Cool. Well, I'm going to use this. Uh. Oh. Oh, more. Uh oh, uh oh. Anyways, um, anybody watching this later, I guess, uh, or now, it looks like there's some kind of line reverberating through my uh, OLED monitor as I speak from my camera. Uh, yeah, so anyways, what we'll do here is we are going to, oh shoot, do I have, where's chat? There we go. Cool. Yeah, anyways. <clears throat> there we go. Let me get the voice back. Oh, hey. Fancy seeing you here. Anyways, so, welcome uh, to my channel, back to my channel. Let me get this thing to uh, track on me. Uh, I am Mike with Counting for Cycling. It is a little dark in here today because, well, I don't know, I have my giant sheet here covering the massive window. Uh, so this is episode two of accounting on it. Uh, we're going to be, what is it, rolling work papers forward? Another day where I probably should have, yeah, <laughs> rolling forward some work papers. <laughs> Not going to be, uh, <laughs> because nobody wants to see that. Uh, that's just taking last year's Excel document, changing some dates and making it good for this year. Uh, usually copying final balance, paste his values in beginning balance. There, we rolled some work papers. Uh, no, instead, just, I don't know, interesting title. So, there it is. We'll get some lights. We already have the camera, which is following me. There we are. Oh no, it got really dim. So, on uh, last week's episode, I uh, kind of opted not to, on camera, put tubeless tires on. I have since done that. Uh, I also used Silka's tire PSI calculator for tubeless. Uh, it says, hey, you weigh too much for us. Your tires are too wide, uh, but here's a number. It should work. 67 PSI in the back. I think it was like 66 and a half up front. So I'm just going to run them even because, I mean, most road bikes are a 52-48-ish balanced anyways. Uh, triathlon bikes try to do more of a 50-50, same you know, time trial, kind of same get up there. Um, biggest difference, at least as far as I'm concerned, or no, is uh, time trial bikes usually have nothing on them because you know, you're going like 25 kilometers, 30 kilometers, just fast as you can. Uh, in time trial, you want to do that same thing, but I don't know, 100 kilometers, miles, <laughs> usually much, much further. Uh, so still time trial, but like you're pulling bottles out of your back or off the back of the bike. So, yeah, um, getting my road bike ready to go outside, ride around, uh, new wheels, or new tires, not wheels, I can't afford new wheels, oh, um, it's still the same trusty Mercury S5s, uh, but new tires, Grand Prix, or uh, Continental Grand Prix all season tubeless ready TR, I think I mistakenly put TL somewhere at some point. Um, some naming scheme that they have, but they look very much the same as my regular Grand Prix 5000s did. Uh, just, I don't know. Uh, when I had them unmounted, they kind of were, it felt like they had some more grip to them. It's gonna zoom, try and zoom this in a little bit. So a huge benefit if you're using something like um, NVIDIA Studio is you can zoom 
in without having to like go all the way up to the camera and then have the camera also auto zoom. Using the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 here, it has a gimbal that can track me at a much, much further range uh, than NVIDIA Studio can. So it's a little bit better, plus it can go up and down much further. Um, I don't know, NVIDIA Studio is still a pretty cool thing. Uh, if you are in, I should probably, oops. Uh, ah, being attacked by wheels and tires. <laughs> so, speaking of the old ones, so a big thing that I notice different between the All Seasons and these just the standard tube versions is it seems like the casing is substantially thicker, which would make sense. Um, I think these are 330 TPI and yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the All Seasons though, they definitely feel sturdier, more durable, a little bit of a sturdier sidewall. Um, I looked up the weight difference on them. They're only like a few grams apart. And as somebody who can probably take a dump and lose more than what this wheel weighs, that's not a concern of mine. So even though I do also use titanium but bolts on here and it's a carbon fiber frame, and you know, we are going lightweight, uh, but mostly aero than anything. Um, but also with comfort and compliance, because you know, that's why I ride a Roubaix. It's a very, very, very comfortable bike uh, for longer, longer endurance rides um, and for rougher roads. Uh, speaking of, the Roubaix Classic just happened, so I was not on it, but yeah. There we go. So, and of course my uh, office slash workshop slash studio is a little messy. Um, cleaner actually than it usually looks, uh, but messy in the sense of like, this is up there, this is open. Uh, my side table for when I do Zwift rides is just got stuff all over it. Um, did a super compact tube roll. I don't like to keep the, you know, the valve pointing outward. Um, just, I don't know, it seems like it's a recipe to break it. Uh, but also it should keep the tube better if you only carry one. But versus super compact roll is what happens when you're in a meeting and you don't really need to be in the meeting uh, but all you need to do is be able to hit unmute so you can chime in and say your words um, well rolling this compared to this so it's much more compact um, getting the electrical tape off on the side of the road after uh, suffering a flat might be a little bit different uh, versus just a rubber band that you can either snap or roll off. <laughs> but hey, whatever. If we're going for compact and clean, that technically functions. So I do still have a runny nose from allergies, but everything else seems to be gone. Um, little bit itchy eyes which just leads to I can't see far away and I should just wear my glasses but instead of doing that I move closer and then I can't see more so I'm just gonna pull up the stream here on my Surface Pro so I can just kind of more closely monitor the chat. Uh, not that like a ton of people hop in and talk about things, but uh, it makes it a little bit easier too so that I can actually monitor the stream. And yeah, see that I'm not completely in the dark here. That's awesome.
I was a little worried about that. So, don't totally know what we're going to do today, but I have an idea. Just grabbing my handy iFixit toolkit. Not sponsored, I just, I don't know, it seems like everybody who has one, it's like a requirement. Let's see if it catches me again. Sort of. Seems like if you have an iFixit toolkit, you have to say specifically it's an iFixit toolkit. Not just good for technology. It is great for non-electrics technology, Swiftwick socks. Don't forget to hydrate if you haven't already. So is this freezing or is that freezing? Ah, excellent. It's just this. Cool. I've got to clear out the cookie jar on this because it, I don't know, chrome keeps freezing and it, it's not ideal because like it shouldn't be the, the computer itself. Like it's a, it's still a pretty relevant i7 and we might want to go a little bigger than that. Um, and then also 16 gigs RAM and a pretty quick SSD in there. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But I think what we'll do today work on some gear indexing. I mean, we could probably call it like ASMR and then like get some weirdos to hop on and watch it. Um, but it's not that kind of show. So a place where I've been having some issues, uh, even last year, was, and I'm not going to be able to replicate it on the stand, uh, is when putting down power under load, which, like going uphill, for example, and trying to downshift uh, from the big ring to the little ring, it will hop too far, uh, which means my front derailleur indexing is off. Uh, fixie fans and single speed or, or uh, fixie and one by fans will just say, oh, easy, get rid of one of the chain rings. No, <laughs> I like having more speeds. Uh, it gives me false confidence when going up hills that I have just one more that's a little easier. So, it really just needs to go and ever so slightly. And pop this back down here. See if we can. Now, I'm not going to be able to put down enough weight on uh, like the zero, like the zero to uh, ninety or zero to one hundred and twenty range here, to actually be able to replicate putting down a lot of force on the pedals while also trying to downshift. But it should give me a touch of an indicator of how far out of whack this thing is. 
Ooh, we gotta go quite a ways. So, by indexing gears, you're basically just trying to find that sweet spot of furthest out and furthest in that your chain can move, um, kind of by doing any extreme of gears, so that, I mean, realistically, you should be able to be in the highest gear on your rear cassette, and then also the small chain ring. So, small, small, or the big ring, and the easiest gear, or, you know, it's the most tooth one. Um, on the rear cassette. So you should be able to do that cross chaining. It's not good. It usually sounds weird and feels weird and looks weird. Uh, it can put quite a bit of tension and strain on your chain. Uh, because that's kind of the furthest extent it should be able to go, is either of those extremes. But you should, design-wise, be able to safely operate at it. So if, say we were assigning number gears to this, this is a 10-speed cassette on the back, and there's two front chain rings. So this would be gear 10, roughly. And you can hear a little bit of the metal going ting 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 ting. So I'll just kind of Doesn't. There we go. Go too far over. So, if the different ways that you can index your gears, I mean, you could just kind of count the number of turns, then spin uh, by holding up your bike in the air if you don't have a work stand. You can not recommend it. Let's see, cool. Um, <laughs> you can, although it's not recommended, flip your bike and work on it upside down. It allows you to still get access to the gear levers, still be able to pedal the bike, and I mean, you'll be working upside down, but also then get to the actual gears. Let's see if we can... Yeah, I feel like we should be zoomed out a little bit more here. I can't figure out right now, or can't think of uh, how to shift it in the other um, autofocus. So there should be ways on here where like you can just set up the autofocus to where like I'm up here in this corner, um, and then you have all of bike. But instead I'll just have to work on my squats. So when you're indexing your rear derailleur, that's the one that's most commonly done. Uh, it's still not a very common process that needs to be done. Uh, it's definitely good to check before each season. Uh, if you experience any shifting problems, that's a good way at least just to look at it, make sure it's not something actually coming loose. Um, if you're on the bike, you can use barrel adjusters that are actually up by your handles. Uh, after a while, you do run out of that, or for the rear, your barrel adjuster is right at the back. But it's not something you want to do. That's like a last resort. Wow! Subject lost. So it is... This right here, this is your barrel adjuster for your rear derailleur. And it's dirty, but 
you have your high adjustment screw and your low adjustment screw. And what those will do is actually, it might be hard to see on here, but I'm trying to get some good contrast in the back. Two, three, four. And you can kind of see it's moving outward and then inward. And that will correlate to where the chain actually falls on your cassette as you're pedaling. So, if you hear kind of an unusual amount of noise coming out of the back, that's where you know, you'd want to, if you're out on the course, maybe just do one or two corrections here, or if it's just nothing serious. Um, I would, I, my kind of, to myself, rule is, if I have to move this adjuster more than three total rotations in any direction, we get a re-index. And just involves putting the bike up on a stand and pedaling a lot with your hand um, because your bike stand almost definitely will not be able to support you and the bike in any kind of meaningful way uh, but if it does like wow that's a hell of a stand uh, or you bought a, like a motorcycle stand so, I'm going to turn off my projector because I forgot. It goes up against that wall. So, but yeah, my, my rear derailleur seems to be pretty good. So, um, but the front one, still not bad. Uh, basically, all I had to do was just kind of learn and remind myself that the problem is happening when under load, when pedaling with my primarily my right foot from here to here, if I were to downshift from the big ring to the small ring, like there's a lot of ifs here, the chain might pop off and end up down there. So, yeah, it, it's still not like a huge issue. It just meant that last season I kind of had to build more content of that. But, yeah. Um, other awesome things you can do on the bike stand is uh, clean your bike. It's a lot easier to clean your chain when you can put a chain tool or a chain cleaning tool uh, directly onto it and then just kind of pedal it through instead of either manually cleaning the entire chain link by link, uh, running a cloth over it, or removing the chain, um, which for mine, I have a reusable quick link. So that's not so bad. Uh, but if you don't have a reusable quick link, you now need a new chain. Or, uh, why am I saying quick link? Uh, quick link, master link, Basically, it's a, there we go, it's a chain link that you can put onto your chain and it just quickly clicks on, either with a set of pliers or a chain tool. Um, just makes it easier so you can actually reuse your chain. Uh, it's definitely nice once you get in some of the lighter weight chains or more expensive ones. Uh, where a chain might be fifty, sixty, hundred dollars, uh, you don't want to be replacing those every time. You want to pop your chain off and clean it. Um, also, let's get a chain cleaning tool. Uh, I do not have mine around because it is in the bathroom slash uh, bike spa. As I said last week, uh, everything serves multiple purposes here. But. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of the big thing. It seems like it's 
mostly worked out. Pop that over there. And a bike stand doesn't have to be super expensive. Uh, this one from Bike Hand, I think it's like $120. I can fit my, uh, granted, it, like kind of, it's pushing its limits, uh, but I can fit my uh, Specialized Turbo Vado on there, which is, I would say like 60 pounds with the full gearing. Um, probably a little bit less. I think it's like claimed weight is like 54 pounds. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be more than fine for any kind of mountain bike, commuter bike, uh, road bike. So it works just fine. And I think it was like $120. Um, you can definitely get nicer ones from like Park Tool. Uh, I don't remember what theirs are, but if I had to guess, I'd say like 500, probably more. I don't know. Um, I'll try and have those linked down in the description if I remember to put them in there. But yeah, you don't need anything terribly fancy. You definitely want to check out the reviews. And yes, I know that this is loose. It just does that. <laughs> so <laughs> this is, if you pull it this way, like I just did, it will drop the entire thing. So I really shouldn't have messed with that. Um, <laughs> but it is nice where the head completely collapses down. The whole thing uh, can fold up to be, you know, roughly the size of like a golf bag. And so nice and compact, you can throw it into a corner. Uh, it does have like a work tray on it too that also folds up. Uh, mine never gets folded up. Uh, if anything, it gets compacted down and just sits here. Uh, so I can see over it, but yeah, uh, another benefit too that a work stand gets you is you can move the bike to you. So we'll lock that in there. Uh, so we're working, this is a little too high, but just as an example, we're working on the rear derailleur. We're only going to need, uh, at least here in the United States and North America, the right hand shifter to run your rear cassette. Uh, I hear across the pond, uh, it's the other way or can be the other way. Um, I have not encountered that, only heard it. Uh, so that's weird. But, at least for what I'm used to, uh, the right-hand shifter works your rear derailleur and your rear brake. And then the left one works your front derailleur if you have one. If you don't have one, just your front brake. Uh, or if you're a crazy track cyclist, you don't have shifters, brifters, or anything. You just have uh, insanity and a velodrome. Um, I don't track ride. Um, I have the weight for it. I do not have the strength for it. And it's not the right kind of weight. Uh, but so a bike stand allows you to do that kind of thing. Also, like, if I'm here just inspecting my rear wheel, like, I can do that nice and easy uh, with my bike in this kind of ridiculous position here. Uh, same thing if I'm cleaning specifically the back makes it so you don't have to bend down, you don't have to squat down. Um, everything just kind of goes to you. But you can also set the bike level. If you're looking at, say, working at your seat angle. Uh, I would not do that on a stand. There we go. Uh, mostly because there's a little bit of flex forward. Uh, but for in installing things like uh, just getting your aero bars mounted, it's good for that. Uh, and then do the final mounting once it's down flat and stable. Same thing with handlebars. Uh, that's just my, oops, my thought on it. Uh, obviously your mileage may vary, uh, but also, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's just... Ever since I got 
also try not to hit the ceiling fan. <laughs> Ever since I got this work stand, working on my bike has been so much easier and bikes, uh, but yeah, and just brings it up to you. That's just kind of a nice creature comfort thing. Um, if you have the space for it too, that's awesome. Uh, they also make versions too where you can cl you can actually bolt it to a wall. This technically is supposed to be a bike hook for storage. Uh, it is a very cheap Amazon version. I'm a little bit surprised none of this has fallen down in the last like two years. But I would not put my bike on it. It is way too flimsy, even though it is bolted into a stud with two bolts. <laughs> but yeah. Um, other spring cleaning things too, or just kind of spring checkup things. If you have a bike computer, or in my case, two, I still have the old one. Uh, same with lights. This one clearly has not been used in a while. It's a little dusty. Um, problem solved. But it's very important. I don't think this one's going to fire up to wow it is it works i don't think i've charged it in over a year two years because my varia radar replaced it um, but yeah just make sure that your lights are charged that they function at least in the functions that you will want them to work through And if they are smart lights, both of these are, uh, make sure that they actually connect to the equipment you want to connect to, whether it's your uh, Garmin watch. Uh, I think Apple watches can work with some of these now too. Um, I don't have one, um, nor have I tested it with one. I leave that to the people who have the uh, connections and budgets to actually purchase like seven different watches. So, and then also just, you know, these seem like kind of minor things, but make sure if you have a bike light mount on the back, uh, mine is just, it's a Garmin Varia. I think it came with the radar and it connects by, why did I think pulling it down would help? And it just, it connects here by these little rubber bands, uh, which are substantially stronger than you think they'd be. Uh, but you just want to make sure that it actually fits on there and is sturdy so that when you go to use it, it doesn't fall off. And then you're, you, know, you don't get the orange line that tells you that there's traffic uh, with the dots and the beeps. And then also we'll Which it, yeah, there we go. For your head mount. So your, you want to make sure your head unit mounts, you want to make sure they turn on. Ooh, new sensor detected. No, no, we don't want to connect to my watch. Um, but yeah, uh, so you just want to go through and uh, most of this information you can change on your phone through the Garmin Connect app. Uh, same if you have a Wahoo. Wahoo's kind of big shtick is that you can set the whole thing up through your phone and through an app. And so like if you have emergency contact set up, fall, instant detection, live tracking, you just want to make sure everything is accurate, up to date, and then also make sure that you have battery. Mine's at 100 because I just charged it. Um, if you have different profiles set up, just you know, make sure they're still correct. So this little indicator here is just telling me that it is looking for uh, my radar along with any other smart sensors, uh, which are off at the moment. But just make sure everything is firmly planted on there and connected and There we go. Yeah, and 
make sure it's all good, set, ready to go. If it's your first ride on the Season 2, like, highly recommend doing a shakeout ride. Do something close to home uh, where you can go various different speeds, braking. If you have hills, try that. I have to go a ways for hills, uh, a couple of miles at least. So, <laughs> um, maybe a little too far with that. I would feel comfortable walking my bike, uh, but also, yeah, we'll see. But, so you want to make sure that you have all of that set up, ready to go, um, just kind of, here we go. You'd hardly tell that I've had this thing for six months now, five months, five months. Um, I've actually run with it multiple times. There. I'm trying to get more used to a lot of the on-screen stuff to really get it ready and going. Um, so I can maybe like take it out and competently vlog with it and not just look like a buffoon, but a buffoon that knows their camera. Uh, but yeah, so it's just, it's really important. A quick shakeout ride, like if you have a bigger parking lot near you that's not busy, um, if you do use a parking lot, I recommend something that you can see everything and pay attention. Um, or if you have a friend to just come and like spot you, um, that's always nice too. Uh, but just do a couple of quick circles, tight circles, make sure you know that you didn't forget how to brake or that your brakes work. Um, and kind of work your way up from that in importance. Um, like if you go on that shakeout ride and you notice that your gears are making funny noises or your chain breaks, this will allow you to, at the longest, be able to walk your bike just a little bit, either back to your car or back home versus you're 30 miles from home and hi, I'm stuck and I'm scared <laughs> and I'm in cleats. <laughs> I can't make it home. Um, <laughs> so it just gives you a good opportunity to test out your gear, test out your bike, test out your own skills even. And that way, if something happens, you're close by home, just do, um, I found one good one is usually about all you need. A uh, good like five, 10 minute shakeout ride. That's usually enough to make sure that the wheels are bolted on, pedals aren't gonna fall off and your chain's not gonna snap. Uh, but make sure shift through all those gears, try out the brakes, uh, basically all things you should have tried on a work stand already or in the garage, uh, just to <laughs> make sure nothing bad happens. And if you don't have a work stand, you can't, can't or don't want to afford one, uh, can't find one that ships to wherever you are, you don't need this if you can set your seat untrack it for me. You can set the nose of your seat. Usually if you have like a tube kind of thing, like a, I don't know, the top of a, I don't know, if you've been to like a duathlon, triathlon, anywhere where you have to rack a bike, you'll notice that you just kind of like rack it up here. You can do that same thing. And as long as you can still reach the front of the bike, to shift through everything and still move the wheel. Like that is a good, I won't say a hack for a work stand, but you just need something kind of stable that you can set your bike on that you feel comfortable with that can also take the weight of moving. I'm moving the camera ever so slightly because it's connected through this cord here <laughs> and the cord is going straight through the pedals. So yeah, um, I mean those are just kind of my recommendations. Um, shoot. Another one too is don't drop blocks of wood on your computer. These are blocks small blocks of cedar 
that are supposed to go into closets to keep like moths and bugs away and make your clothes smell nice. Uh, it came in an eight pack and there are six, six of them standing there. So I've been hard at work putting those to use. But yeah, um, I didn't, I got kind of busy at work. Uh, otherwise I was actually planning to have something more set up here. But let's, uh, I also was planning not to be all like nose runny boogery. But I am. All of you get to hear it. This sounded, in my head, this worked better. Um, in practicality, it's working pretty good too. But I am going to, no, we want that. Ooh, not like that. Uh, <laughs> All right, bear with me for a second. Um, I do not want to be the like big major picture here. We are going to do. Why are you not doing your thing? Dun, 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 I don't know why it's way over there, but here it is. Here we go. Rock and roll. Yeah. Um, let's just, like move this up there. This is why it would be very helpful to have like a competent second person to operate this. Um, I can do one or both. Or <laughs> one, the other, I can kind of do both, uh, but it's much better if we don't try and do everything.
Anyways, here's a couple of different bike stands. Um, realizing I have to get off of my monitor and I'm an idiot. I'm trying to be cool over here using studio mode in OBS and apparently to school for cool and totally forgot that the uh, <laughs> the video here had not moved over to the main program, just the preview. I'm learning here, I'm learning. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so this bar here, that's the thing I was talking about. Uh, same with this side of the monitor. Like this side of the monitor is actually pointing towards this jersey here. So, could easily be fixed by just flipping it, uh, but I don't want to at this moment. Um, it's wrong 180. Um, I was looking for that. There we go. So now this is the correct side. Uh, this is actually directly over there, over my left shoulder, your right, and uh, it's arranging things. Cool, 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 cool. Um, also, uh, just realizing that community is like 15 years old now. Uh, it's still streaming places, so watch it. I guess I don't know. I'm cool either way. I don't. I don't get anything from that. Uh, but if you do sign up for Prime Video using my Amazon affiliate links, I think I get like four bucks. Ooh, ooh. it's like a cup of coffee. Almost a big cup of coffee. So. Oh, cool. Uh, so yeah, here's the bike hand repair stands. Uh, this one is the one that goes to 55 pounds. I think I have this guy. No, that's got a different head on it. Uh, so yeah, I have this one. 55 pound max weight. Uh, huh, jokes on them. It can actually take more than that. Uh, it, I, it definitely comes forward and puts a lot of stress on these. You really want to make sure you have a stable floor. Here's the little work table thing. Um, if you bump it, things will bounce out. Uh, but there's also like cut-ins for your tools. The head moves a lot. And yeah, here's somebody's Fuji bike on it. Do not clamp your carbon fiber bikes like this. Um, I would even say don't clamp your aluminum bikes like that. Seat tube. Seat tubes, relatively cheap. Frames, not cheap. So don't clamp your bike on the top tube. <clears throat> if it's steel, I don't know, go for it. Um, I still wouldn't. I would still do the seat tube because like, let's say you need an aluminum seat tube. Those are pretty inexpensive. Um, yeah, <laughs> so don't clamp on the top. But yeah, it's, so yeah, if you have it down that low, like you will absolutely just want to pop that head down and it goes real nice and compact, might bump your knees if you're not looking at it, uh, but also like it's pretty well out of the way and it folds all the way up. Oh yeah, here's the tool thing. Tools not included. They are not. Um, check these guys out though. Pro bike tool. Um, let's see if I can actually get it to focus. Oh, it's still trying to find me. Pro bike tool is an affiliate uh, partner of mine. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been using their stuff for a while. This is over here because 
with, uh, I used a lot for GoPro stuff. That one's a bad example because it's a, the screw is way back there. <clears throat> but with these little short ones, you can tidy them, you know, crank them on, crank them off, uh, get it on there tight or loosen it and it gets you a nice hand grip here plus different bits. A couple of hex bits and then <clears throat> a T6 torque bit or Torx bit in the Phillips head screw. So kind of like just your most frequently used on the bike. It is not a torque wrench uh, but my torque wrench is from Pro Bike Tool as well. Uh, my new one is at least. I have three of them. Um, but yeah, my new one is from them and it's nice. Looks cool. And it didn't get dropped and knocked out of whack. So yeah, um, that's a, also a very important thing to get if you start working on your own bike is a torque wrench uh, because everything should be torqued down to a certain amount. Um, if it's not, it can cause irreparable damage to carbon frames, even to aluminum frames, uh, stripping bolts. It can break, uh, break screws, break bolts, uh, break cables. Yeah, uh, basically, at least for that last final part, you don't want to just kind of hand tighten it and hope for the best. Uh, you'd be surprised how strong you can be uh, when trying to torque down a part. So yeah, anyways, uh, this bike hand bike stand, highly recommended. It's really cool. Um, plus like $90 is, yeah, that's a much uh, value, better value, I would say. Uh, they do have different kinds too. Uh, it doesn't have to be bike hand that you get. This is just my personal experience with them that they've been really good. Uh, check the reviews. That's like 10,000 sitting 4.7 out of five with, I like to go to the one star reviews because like, it'll be like, this stole my daughter, ran off with my kids, took my wife, bike is 45 pounds. Uh, your mileage will probably vary um, at least a little bit, but I have put a bike with its gear that is heavier than 55 pounds, no more than like a couple of hours on it, um, except when the wheel was off. Uh, this was my e-bike. The back wheel popped within a month of when I bought it and probably like 10 miles on it. <laughs> and yeah, the back wheel popped and I put it up on the stand, took the wheel off because at the time I didn't have a bike rack on the back of our RAV4. And I didn't really feel like shoving it in the back of the car because it also kind of didn't fit when we had to do that to bring it home with its flat tire. Flat being a very generous term, completely shredded. Uh, somebody had put a bunch of tacks into the bike lane and was a giant asshole. So, we'll probably hear my dog barking back. Uh, she knows them. And also dropped 20 inches. Whoa, hitting my forehead in the attached photo. Ooh, ow. Um, doesn't look like a horrible hit, but like, as a guy also who's a, hair challenged yeah that you're gonna feel that scratch i mean even if you have hair um but yeah i, I mean with the majority of these being four and five star reviews probably pretty good uh but i like to read the one star reviews too and the biggest ones i go to are usually like the fours uh mostly because like then you get a pretty good idea of what you're actually getting into uh, a lot of people are a little bit hesitant to give something like a five out of five and whoa it's amazing 
fixed all of the world's problems uh, just with one simple bike stand. But yeah, um, so that's one I have. There's all kinds of different versions. There's like this one says heavy duty e-bike. Um, it's also clamped on. Oh no, that's just a poor picture. Um, yeah, also clamped on from the top too. Like you can do it with this bike. I wouldn't do it because like you've got your brake and shift cables that are going to be squished by it. And that's going to screw up your shifting and your braking, especially with mechanical discs like that. Um, yeah, that would be seat tube. Yeah, you can get one tabletop. Um, this one's a little tripod stand one. Um, that's probably just going to be a little more stable overall. I don't know, or like you can spin it better. And... Hmm. see where that took me on competitive cyclist uh, because like I am in this corner here uh, even on my own screen because I turned the projector off so I can't just look over there and I don't know I just didn't want to it's running through an actual capture card uh, so I would actually have to go and unhook the HDMI's and switch them around and uh, that's just a ton to happen um, competitive cyclist also an affiliate partner of mine and yeah, I don't know, they just have good stuff. I like Backcountry too. They're same, they're under the same parent company. Um, I think Backcountry might actually pay me a little bit more in affiliate commissions. Pricing though is almost always the same. Um, I don't say I don't totally care about that. I think out of affiliate earnings, my biggest ones that I've earned from has been uh, like Anchor, like uh, chargers, docking stations, cables. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's been more of the accounting side of things than the cycling. Um, bike stand, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Park tool. Yeah. Oh, well, it's not that bad. Okay. Deluxe home mechanic stand. 260. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Uh, looks very similar. Like, cool. Uh, also collapsible, so you can store it away. That's just kind of... Yeah. Um... Where am I going with this? There we go. Uh, but yeah, even there, all sorts of different ones. The $500. Wow. Yeah, that better be for pro mechanics. That thing better be able to hold, like, me, my bike, everything else. Um, it almost certainly can't. But wow. Um, this is for storage. This two-up. I mean, it says it's for tune-up, so, like, I mean, as long as it's off the ground and stable, and you can spin the pedals and the wheel can move, you can do your tune-ups off of it. Um, I don't know if I'd want to do, like, a double-up tree here, because those feet don't seem all that wide, and it just screams, like, it's the whole thing's going to come crashing, we're going to look like that guy on Amazon with the big scrape on the forehead. Uh, this is more like if you need to park your bike standing up or do non-drivetrain maintenance on it. Um, great for washing your bike. You can just kind of wheel it right in, um, either front or back wheel. Usually back wheel because it doesn't turn. Um, but, you know, it depends on how comfortable you feel with its balance. <laughs> That's... This is so you can mount your tablet, and it's Tacx brand from Garmin, uh, $145. No. Um, with that, check out Amazon. That whole table back there that I use uh, was 
I don't know, eighty dollars, and like it will, it's meant to be something that like you can work in bed or work at the couch. It's a laptop stand, so it can definitely handle the weight of your tablet or your computer. Get one of those, and then uh, like some clamp-on cup holders, and you get the whole set. Um, that is actually exactly what I have off there, including the clamp-on cup holders. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, so this morning I had my permanent crown put in, uh, this very far back molar, and the temporary crown was just hypersensitive to everything cold until like two days ago. And then it was just kind of sensitive to everything cold, including breathing outside. So ice water in a thing that's meant to keep your water cold for a day. I have missed you, ice water. It's still a little sensitive. It went in this morning, but it's um like it. But yeah, putting in the permanent crown was like uh, there was no numbing or anything. They just popped the old one out uh, that they 3D printed while they were scraping down the old tooth. And uh, yeah, they popped the 3D printed one out, popped in this new one. Uh, I wish I would have gotten a picture of it before they put it in, but like it feels really cool and. Yeah, uh, basically just brush your teeth is all I got to say about that. Uh, brush your teeth and see the dentist. It's a lot cheaper and easier to take care of it now than later. Um, I am not a dentist. I am an accountant. I do know a couple of dentists, though. So, yeah. Uh, they are not paying me to say this. I'm not being forced to say this. Don't worry about who's over there. It's nobody over there. It's the <laughs> computer screen. And yes, I totally know I could be using that Logitech webcam up there. Um, or any webcam. I've got my uh, Epic Cam 2 right here. This is how you do the uh, security for it. Is, um, let me grab it. So normally, when sitting up here, I'm like, oh, ha, 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 I can see me. Somebody's watching. Uh, get a VPN, all that good stuff. And so they don't watch you. Just clip it here. Now it's pointing up in the up at the ceiling. I don't care about that. They can see the apartment ceiling. It's there. It's not anything to write home about. It's just a plain white ceiling. So yeah, back to bike stuff. Uh, but so like this is a tabletop. You can see it's got like four big, uh, probably leg bolts that you put in there and just <laughs> clamp it to your work table. Uh, this one here, the wall. And you can see price-wise pretty similar. Um, obviously if it's bolted something that's like part of your building, you're probably going to be able to put a little more weight on it. Um, still probably not motorcycle, but... A little more. Um, this just looks cool. Uh, that's also a, like a stand to stick your bike up in when you're not using it. Uh, same thing here. So if you have to park your bike and you don't want to lean it up on something inside of your garage or home or hang it up on a wall or if you are at a race or really just anything and you don't want to have your bike laying on the ground and you want to pull this thing out, like, go for it. Or, yes, I know you can get a kickstand. Uh, my e-bike has one. It is like the most over-engineered thing Specialized possibly could have made, but it does function. Uh, but yeah, my road bike does not have one. I just lay it non-drive side down. And then if it gets dirty, I wash it. Or I lean it up against something. Like, it's a 
bike, lean it on something that you can fix. So like if you lean it with your handlebars and your seat up against the wall, uh, handlebars especially, uh, bar tape is like the most expensive bar tape I've seen is like 50 bucks. And that is from Silka and that stuff is nice. <laughs> like very comfortable. Um, yeah. <laughs> And it's not that difficult to replace. If you want to look really clean and crisp, like you're gonna apply it, remove it, apply it a couple of times for the first application. Um, watch a ton of videos on it. Um, mine I got so it looks good enough. And so when somebody, even on decently close inspection, looks at it, it looks, it looks good. Not great, good. Um, but the most important part is it is comfortable and it is functional. Ah, here we go. So here's a, a stand where like you would just clip your seat onto, uh, for $330, better believe this is just for events. Uh, most places I've seen, they just have like, uh, wooden saw horses and like a steel tube that they, or like a pole that they use <laughs> instead of this over-engineered contraption. Uh, that looks probably a little bit better. Uh, looks more stable, but I don't know, I've never seen one fall when it's fully laden with bikes. I have seen one fall when they were setting it up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, check this kind of stuff out though. Um, yeah, if you feel more comfortable with a name brand like Park Tool, be my guest. Uh, if you're okay with a thing called bike hand, also great. Uh, Toppy, also another, like, they make really good stuff too. It is a name brand. So, yeah, there's a couple of different ones that you can check out there. Um, tools wise, bike tool kit. Um, oh, that's just a bleed kit. Um, oops. Yikes. Uh, these, the muck-off valve kits here, uh, whoa. Let's just go to muck-off. Ah, shit. You can see I've been checking out a lot of this stuff lately. Um, Two uh, Another one of my affiliate partners. Oh, it's off sale. Oh no. Um, I've been using muck off stuff for a long time. The old stuff, it just doesn't have uh, as nice of vent holes. Uh, but for eight dollars, if they're if you can find them in stock, they're still nice. Come in all sorts of different colors. Um, I have these guys. They say all new, but I think they came out like two years ago. Um, in blue. Uh, but yeah, so it comes with these different inserts here for plugging the hole that you put the valve through. Uh, I currently have these ones in because it goes, um, yeah, it seals it better on my particular set of wheels. Um, but yeah, it comes with all of them. And so these little slits here are supposed to help keep sealant from clogging up the base of your valve. So, I don't know. I like that the thing comes with all of the little rubber insert dealies that you might need. Comes with the little rubber gasket thing that goes on the top part of the tube, or on the uh, outer part inner portion of the rim and it has the nut that you screw down to actually tighten both pieces together to make it seal. Uh, things that you should do before putting seal in and high air pressure in. Otherwise it just goes <laughs> and shoots up. Um, yeah, totally not. Yeah, obviously saying that because of somebody else, not me. Um, 
my tubeless experience went totally perfectly fine and normal and worked right away. Didn't have to remount the tires like three times. Um, I mean, actually the rear wheel went just fine. Um, it is the one though that spits sealant up through um, the not totally sealed portion. Um, so I did unmount the tires and clean it back out, put new rim tape on, thinking that was the cause. Um, turns out it was actually because I had this thingy on and this nut wasn't on tight enough. And I actually needed this rubber boot and this needed to be tighter. So, uh, but yeah, it comes with all that. Plus this is like a valve core tool that you can put right on the valve to cover it and protect it. And then also if you need to retighten your your valve core, you can do that. Um, I've actually used this tool substantially more than these yet. Um, because I've actually had everything ready to go tubeless for two years now and just finally decided to go for it. Yeah. Um, I guess I watched too many people in the Pro Peloton do it and now it's like, why wouldn't you just, okay, you have to watch your tires more. Uh, make sure they have pressure. Crazy talk. Uh, Muckoff, though, they run a lot of sales. They just finished up their Easter sale, uh, which is kind of why I pulled up this web page, uh, because then it, you know, if it was still like 30% off, um, it would be really cool because that would be a great deal. Um, I mean, $38 is still, I don't know, I think it's a little, a little much for that, but, um... That's also usually where like you can get the whole tubeless kit. And I think this is enough for two tires too. But you have to be careful if you have um, deep section wheels, a 60 mil valve may not be enough. Uh, so I have 50 mil on mine. I have been running for the previous two years, 60 mil stems or uh, si yeah, 60 mil valve stems, mostly because it was all I could find at the time from Continental uh, with their butyl rubber tubes. And it works okay. Uh, you really have to, when you first seat it though, you have to like yank the valve up and then seat the valve nut down before you can actually put air in. So just kind of be aware of that same thing with the width of your wheel. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, you don't want to get 21 mil tape, but you actually have a 22 mil wide wheel or inner, uh, inner width of your wheels. And now it doesn't cover, you don't get a good seal. You have air flowing out everywhere and you don't know what's happening and sealants pouring all over the place. Um, yeah, no. Uh, but yeah, this kit though comes with the valves, comes with puncture kit. I think the valves are just black though. Um, yeah, if that's your thing, you can always spice it up later and add, yeah, two pouches of tubeless, tubeless sealant, two included black valves. And they are still the CNC machine aluminum, so they are still very nice valves. Um, just, you know, you don't get to pick a color that matches everything else on your bike. But you can always get that with the, uh, the valve cover and the valve nut. You can always change later. So you're not stuck in stone with that. Plus, if you ever decide to change out your tubeless valves, um, you know, just go through, do it as part of your, like, annual maintenance. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's a cool kit, um, muck off is, it's good stuff, their tubeless tape is much cooler looking than, I had orange seal, because at the time when I purchased the, the setup for it, orange seal was, like, in stock, 
and I thought I was going to be doing it within days, and nope. Um, so yeah, just kind of, you know, choose your different variety. And they do, you know, also gravel wheels, thicker wheels for e-bikes if you want to run tubeless, um, and then also mountain bikes. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of all I had on that. Um, this is just easier. Accounting for cycling dot com. If you haven't been yet, check it out. Um, I do have a website. Yes, it has ads. I do get a little bit of money uh, for every like one person a week that visits it. Um, that isn't me because my cookies are already deeply embedded in here. It's just easier to get to stuff I like. And yeah, my bit.ly link thing, which I know is really, really long. Uh, Fisher Space Pens actually dropped off of my, the place that I, one of the affiliate link places that I use, Avant Link. Uh, they, I don't think, have an affiliate program anymore, which kind of sucks because, like, I like their pens. And I know that's weird, but, like, they're cool. This one's, like, one of their more entry ones. It's something that like I would actually carry around the office and maybe let somebody borrow versus like this one which I have engraved and it's a super cool blue. Here we go. What we want. Come on. I'm trying to get it to actually lock on. Instead it's like no I want to see your face. Uh, but yeah, so it's engraved and it's one of their bullet pens and it's just really cool. Well weighted, feels great in the hand, writes amazing, and you can write upside down since it is a pressurized sealed cartridge. So yeah, um, I do have a video out about that. It's not the greatest of production qualities, um, but <laughs> As far as like, I didn't go through and like manually add in a bunch of zoom cuts and all that. Um, I mostly used, uh, there's a bunch of new features that hit Premiere Pro and I was playing around with them and it got rid of filler words like uh or um or uh or just dead space and did all that for me. It was really cool. Where was that good one? Uh, Swiftwick socks. Get them. Wear them. I'm wearing them right now. Like, all the time. I'm not all, all the time, but I would say like 98% of the time I am wearing, if I'm wearing socks, which is almost always, um, I think bare feet are weird and kind of nasty. Um, I'm wearing Swiftwick socks. And this pair, too, is even one of my older pairs and they hold their shape well and they have great compression um, on the maxis which is these uh, it's not like anything crazy but if your feet are sore they will feel good and they have cushion and very comfortable so i don't think i can say enough about swiftwick socks and how much they actually do rock they in fact rock um, bib boards, same kind of thing. That one, I actually have a discount code. Uh, accounting for cycling, 20% off your order. That's between that and GVM LED studio gear, which I have 10% off. Those are kind of the only ones where I can actually get you like a super cool deal. Uh oh, I think my work laptop is coming to life. It's not going to steal the screen from me. I've got the docking station off. I just heard the of the little fan inside of a Surface laptop. 
Uh, but yeah, check these things out. Uh, Pro Bike Tool, they're just really kind of awesome because a lot of great affordable just equipment. Right here, Universal Walmart, 45 bucks. Like, that's more of where it'll hold the top tube and then um, not great if you have exposed cabling underneath your top tube. Um, if you have carbon fiber, not the best for it. Uh, but as long as you're not putting a bunch of excess pressure and definitely not clamping, that's where it gets really bad for carbon. Um, yeah, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, I keep going back and forth about wanting to get this, but like I already have a ton of torque wrenches and even like a, I got like a, a treat myself from Silica of a portable torque wrench and yeah, it's, it's fancy. Ooh, little bike. There we go. So, yeah. Uh, Silka gear, though. Uh, I've pretty much come to the conclusion that I will be waxing my chain at some point. Uh, but it won't be the chain that's on my bike right now. That one, <laughs> it I put it on before this late September, I think it was, uh, I was after my chain had popped off during one of the races. I was like, oh, oh no, what do I do? Uh, so I changed it. I also have these two. This is the same one that I have on there right now. Uh, it's just a KMC super light. And then this one is a also KMC 10 speed super light, but gold. So, yeah, um, I'll be doing that probably. Um, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm still back and forth on it. Uh, if I want to, they've got like this whole cool, like cool is relative. Um, but this thingy here, uh, but with the US plug where like it stands up, it holds your chain. You don't have to dirty up a crock pot with wax and then like pour it back into the baggie. You can just like dump the wax in, put the strip chip in, cleans the chain for you and like turns all the factory uh, lubricant that they ship with because you don't just want to throw that chain right on your bike and go. Uh, you want to size it. Uh, easiest way to do that is you take the old chain and you hold it or you put it on a table and stretch it out with your new chain and just make sure it goes link for link and then use your chain tool to break the links and it'll work. If you don't have that, uh, I think it's like you route the chain and then you go like seven links over when it's big to big or I don't know, I'd have to watch a video or read something on it to do it. Um, I just do the lay them side by side and break the chain. <laughs> so as long as you still have your old chain uh, and you want to make sure that that goes link for link, because if your chain is for some reason that horribly stretched out where you might have an extra link that shows up, I don't think they can stretch that much, uh, not in this length of bike chains, but yeah, you, you just want to make sure that it's actually lined up. Um, yeah, uh, Silka is probably one of my favorite places for, they do have bar tape. Uh, when I need to replace mine, I'm probably going to get this uh, Nostro Cusino. I totally butchered that. Um, maybe in black, that's what I have right now. It kind of gives it a nice stealth look, but also I might get this uh, Cyan Blue because it, looks cool and I like the color blue. Um, also it would match my helmet more because my, uh, this guy right here, my new helmet is like a dark blue, light blue with the, does the like shoulder socket 
spherical helmet protection thingy. So, yeah, I don't know, I might do that. Uh, but my the saddlebag that I use is from Silka. Um, I put out a video on it even. The Venti tool, uh, which is just a multi-tool that's in that saddlebag, which is here, I think. Right here. You know, first Endurance. Get their stuff, too. Um, even if you don't use my affiliate links for that, uh, they're actually a partner and a sponsor for Project Echelon, uh, which is a veterans cycling team um, that supports veterans. Um, yeah, and then also, like, on the more amateur side, like, I am a member of Project Echelon. I joined them a couple of months ago, actually, um, after... Ultimately, it came down to, I reached out to them and was like, I'm a very supportive member of Team RWB. Like, does that clash with you guys, or is it cool? And they're like, no, man, it's, join as many VSOs as you can. Like, especially the ones that want you to be more active. Um, yeah, I have not gotten one of their cycling jerseys from Project Echelon yet. Um, but by being a partner and sponsor of theirs... Um, yeah, I don't know, it, I like using this stuff anyways, it doesn't cause GI issues with me, um, I use their pre-race powder, uh, gives you a nice, clean, clear boost to your brain, better than just pounding coffee or most other pre-workouts, and opens up mental clarity a little bit better too, and I feel like it doesn't drop off in a couple of hours and give you the caffeine snoozes. But, yeah, um, and, I mean, it's got 200 milligrams of caffeine in it, so, like, it's going to still get you a little pop. Um, but, yeah, their EFS Pro, I've also, the bag I did a video on is behind me. But, <laughs> by my shoes. I know, it's actually a running vest, but there are shoes behind it. But, yeah, I don't know, I, I swear by their stuff. Uh, their regular EFS line is great for just kind of like everyday training, and then their EFS Pro. Uh, the old formula, uh, which came in lemon-lime, or their new formula, which is lemon water. It's a little crisper, zestier, not, it doesn't seem as sugary, at least to me. And... Yeah, it just, like, it puts you at a whole nother level of uh, carbs hitting your body just kind of, like, right at the right moment, easily digestible. Uh, you're not going to gas anybody out behind you, which is always nice. Um, and also, pardon my French, not going to shit your pants. Also nice. Uh, nobody wants to do that when they're out on the road. Uh, definitely not in a triathlon and then all of a sudden, like, you... <laughs> You feel up with it on the bike leg, and then by the run, you're like, oh, clench the cheeks and run faster, but then you run slower, and then you start getting back pain, and then, yeah. Um, so just find something that's good on your belly. Uh, try it out before you do races or long events. If it sits well, uh, which I've found first endurance, all of their EFS powders, uh, pro or non, I found it sits really well in me. Um, I also use their uh, Multi V Pro, their, um, uh, why am I spacing on it? Optogen HP, and then also Halo. Uh, so, like their whole range of uh, multivitamin supplements. And uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, I like it. Um, I know we're on Silka here, but. Yeah, they've got their whole chain treatments, bicycle spa, tubeless, and tubes. Um, I actually have their brake and drivetrain cleaner in the bike spa slash my bathroom here. It does work nice. Uh, when it hits the surface, it turns bright red. And so it really lets you know if it's hitting grime and stuff. 
Um, also then washes off nice and clean too and doesn't stain your uh, shower, um, unlike our water here, uh, which does stain it in rust. It does help get rid of the rust though if you use the drivetrain and brake cleaner. Um, I also have like a uh, Muckoff's drivetrain cleaner. That's usually what I put into my chain cleaning tool to clean my chain when it's up on, on the bike on the stand. Uh, mostly because it's just this. shock whoa okay everything is still here wow um ooh. but yeah anyway so you just put a uh, fluid in through here it sits inside of this like upper chamber um as you roll your chain through it you just hold on here and you can kind of hold this down and either dump the liquid slowly over the top of the chain. It leaks a little bit, so like you'll get some that'll roll through, um, and then just kind of keep running it through, and it's the different brushes and contraptions, and just pops in, holds down, latches, so you don't have to remove your chain. And then you can use your own cranks on the bike to help with cleaning your chain. Um, and then to clean it, um, the Muckoff drivetrain cleaner is, uh, it's all like water soluble, biodegradable. So it is safe to use down into your drain. Um, and it's not going to clog it because like it's not that thick of a liquid but it's, yeah um i mean still definitely don't like don't eat it but yeah so like this helps with brake squealing so you hold on the brakes and goes it'll help clean that uh, but yeah, like just this, you can watch it turn a purplish red. It's red. Um, like a, a deep burgundy red wine. But yeah, uh, really helps clean. It's about all you can really hope for that. Um, for both the Silka and then also the Muckoff too. Uh, biggest difference is usually uh, Muckoff I've found tends to be just ever so slightly less expensive, but still a good quality uh, cleaner and solution, um, excellent quality products. Silka for their cleaners are still right, kind of right there with the great value um, and lower pricing or relatively competitive pricing when you get to their tools, packs, uh, mounts, hangers, you get an amazing high quality product. Um, price starts to go up. I do not have a, I mean, these are right around where I paid for my pump too. 100, 200 bucks is a pretty good amount. Plus these are fully serviceable too. So with the Silka pumps, they are meant to be disassembled, reassembled uh, for maintenance, and you know, part breaks that can be replaced, uh, metal, so like they're sturdy. Uh, if you need to like fight off zombies with it, you can do that. Uh, they even have the replacement pump, or the uh, replacement pump parts too. So like, and adapters to keep their, keep it going, so I mean, yeah, like this is a $500 pump, but like it's probably the last pump that you will need ever for your bike. Even if like you're throwing it in and out of your trunk and carrying it around from event to event, like you'll be able to 
pick up all the service parts to it, change out chucks. Uh, you know, if your gauge starts to go or you just want a different look to it, uh, you can get gaskets, hoses, everything you would need. Uh, it's, you know, it's really cool. Uh, you know, come, most of their products are meant to be where uh, if it breaks, you can fix it um, or you can send it through in warranty. Uh, but they do tend to be uh, on the pricey side. So, I mean, even like, um, yeah, you can get an Italian army knife type 20 in one multi-tool for less than 50 bucks. Uh, but like this thing is sturdy, sturdy, durable. It's even got an onboard chain tool and you can mount your, uh, I keep calling them quick links, but, um, fast links or something. Um, either way, the quick connectors. I could just check here. That just says super light. It says somewhere, missing link for at least KMC. Um, it's these guys up here. So if you have a reusable one, you can clamp it, open it, reuse it. Uh, most are good for like five, 10, 20 reuses. Uh, check the packaging. Um, you'll also be able to tell once they start to wear because it'll open very easily. Um, and when you try and lock it, it won't stay locked. Um, that's definitely a good indicator that you need to replace it. Um, I like the, as I said earlier, I like the reusable ones because you don't have to worry about like, oh no, I just ruined my chain. I can't ride. Uh, you pop it off, pop back on. Um, I actually have all three of these. The titanium ratchet torque kit, uh, it comes in a really nice like leather folio thing. It's, it's very unnecessarily fancy, but wow, is it nice. Uh, plus with titanium, it is extremely lightweight. Oh, it's just so nice. <laughs> but, and like with the tire levers, <coughs> I actually had points to use on them. Um, so like if you join their member program, you rack up points for everything you buy. Um, so I use points on mine. Uh, plus they're super compact and tiny. Uh, I showed them off in last week's episode. Um, they're in that pack. Yes, I am pointing to the correct spot too. Cool. Um, but yeah, that pack right there. Uh, so they, they pack down a lot better. Uh, don't take up a ton of room. They've even got like a little sleeve that holds them together. <laughs> which you can also use to put on the outside of a CO2 cartridge so that you don't have to have your fingers on a cold cartridge. <coughs> I need more water. But, and you can kind of see here in the smaller versions, the Nove and Tredeci. I think I probably said those wrong as well, but um, I'm guessing what probably 12 and 10, nine maybe. I don't know. I don't speak Italian. Um, but you can see the, uh, the missing link holder in there. So you can actually have a whole extra link in your chain. So if it does snap, you can clamp it back together and you don't have to like finagle something um, with your chain tool that is built into your multi-tool um, on the side of the road um, or turn your bike into a fixed gear or single speed not fixed gear because fixed gear it is one gear but then also like if you stop pedaling the when you move forward the pedals just keep going single speed because you can still have a free hub um, but yeah um, so you don't have to like manually reach down and pick your chain up and hope like move the derailleur and then reach down grab the chain to move it to the correct gear um things i have seen never had to do myself um i have turned my bike into a single speed to get home uh but that was because the derailleur hanger broke and 
it, I mean, you could still kind of, but like you don't have the tensioner then. Uh, so I just shortened the chain down, turned into single speed, got home. Um, in a, and was just sad uh, because nobody wants to, if you have the gears, use them. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Silka just gets you really nice, like top line stuff. Um, bottle cages, that was the one that I was thinking of. That is like the people who have them, though, swear by them. Uh, but so these are titanium bottle cages, and, like 70, 85 bucks. Um, expensive. I kind of want them though. Um, I can't justify it though. I just can't. Uh, it would be purely for a cool factor. Would have nothing to do with weight saving and performance. Um, so it would be exactly like any other titanium part I have on my bike. Purely for weight, or uh, <laughs> cool factor, not weight savings. Um, So, yeah, uh, but yeah, check out all those things. Uh, I only partner up with affiliates and companies that like I use their stuff and actually believe in it. Um, yeah, I do get affiliate or companies reaching out there like, hey, s try and uh, hype up our e-bikes. And it's like, I've never used your e-bike. I can't even speak about any part of the quality or if it's even a real thing. Like you might be selling people potatoes in a box and when they get your e-bike home uh, or shipped to them, they open up and they're like, oh, potatoes again. Um, I really hope that that would never happen, um, but things things do happen um, but yeah I, I mean I earn commissions on these it's never really a ton like I'm by no means about to quit my day job uh, that's why this me rambling and talking uh, ends up at starting at five o'clock because then it's it's after I log off from work and hopefully log off from work um, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, it just helps fund the channel, uh, goes towards things like uh, Adobe Suite so I can uh, use nice cool editing tools for my videos, um, usually not cameras. These all come from the uh, Tech Insider Network. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a members only thing. If you want to learn more about it, uh, Google it. I don't know how to join it. I don't know how I got the invite in 2016. <laughs> Uh, but I've been a member ever since. It's where I got this camera that we're using right now, uh, which it's creator combo came with this microphone. I like this microphone a lot too. Um, these ones I bought, the Rode, um, which also I like those as well, but yeah, I don't know, I'll set that over there. Um, but so I try to disclose that as much as possible. Uh, if for whatever reason I don't disclose something, I'm not trying to trick you. Uh, purely just slip my mind and I will try and correct it as soon as possible. Um, if you are looking for a camera, this thing is really cool. Um, it is not water resistant, not dust resistant. Get a GoPro for those. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just cool. Uh, like vlogging camera, I've shot content on this. Uh, there is a, I did a video on some Sen, oh, I think they're just out of my reach back there, in the pocket of my running vest. Um, ju uh, put out a video recently of some Sennheiser earbud hearing aids and shot the whole thing on this using just this combo kit. Um, I do have... an ND filter on there. Uh, so it does make things a little bit darker, but it also makes uh, colors and contrast pop a little bit better. It's a very weak ND filter plus, yeah. Uh, so it just kind of gives a little bit better definition to everything. 
Um, also, if something does happen to hit the lens of this camera, which is not detachable, uh, I can just replace the filter with either one of the other filters or with one of the same, because I think the filters were like $20. So, um, but yeah. Um, yeah, if you do check out the like link in my bio or a uh, good assumption is just any of the links in my description, just assume that they might pay me commissions. Uh, if not now, maybe in the future. Uh, Zwift does not. It would be awesome if they did. Um, on my Swift live streams, I do have my referral link. Uh, that just gets 30 days for you, 30 days for me. Um, I'm on an annual one, so I just kind of, I don't know, um, it'll, I think it just adds 30 days at the end of my renewal. But, yeah. Um, eventually, I don't know, I'll probably lay these out a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly just so as I find an excuse to work on my bike or, I don't know, clean or something. Um, good excuse to hop on, do a live stream. Um, I see I have one viewer right now. I do actually get a shocking to me number of people that actually like go back and watch these things. Um, but yeah, that way like you can skip around. Uh, but yeah, this is just kind of a, I don't know, I don't know how long I'll keep this thing going, but, uh, if I do keep doing the accounting on it, um, I'll try and think of other, uh, accounting related things that will probably have nothing to do with, uh, what we'll talk about. Unless somebody really truly wants me to see me roll forward some work papers. I don't really do that a lot in my current job. Um, we do account recs that we roll forward, but that's, we copy and paste it in the next month. And then I change all of the dates with a formula. It's not terribly exciting. It happens pretty quickly too. So, um, also it's a lot of sensitive data, so I can't really, I'm not really going to show you my, uh, company's private data. <laughs> so you have to get a job there and then you can roll forward work papers. But yeah, um, if you think of something or an idea for what you want to see here on the next episode, uh, leave a comment, uh, let me know. Check out my website, uh, check out these, uh, this like link in bio here. Um, also too, if you are in the Milwaukee area or somewhere reasonably nearby or roughly nearby on April 20th, I will be doing the, um, the Brew City Half Marathon at Veterans Park in downtown Milwaukee. It should be a pretty cool path, uh, mostly like path run, um, yeah, just kind of get to see all kinds of cool stuff. They also have a full marathon and a 5K and a 10K too. Um, so kind of the whole breadth of distances. Um, otherwise, also you'll see some links in my bio here too, or uh, links in my uh, bit.ly. It's usually in my bio. Um, for the Lake Mills Triathlon, uh, this will be my third year doing it. I am hoping to get faster yet again. Um, last year, the biggest holdback was my wetsuit. I got stuck in it. Um, otherwise, Grand Haven, duathlon, I'm doing the Olympic distance. They also have triathlons, aqua bike, aqua run. Um, yeah, it, another one that has like everything you can think of. Um, otherwise, on May 7th, I'll be in Whitewater doing their uh, sprint triathlon, uh, same thing too. They have all the distances. Um, I'll try and put up any kind of referral. If you click through these, uh, that actually goes through my referral link. Um, I don't think it does really anything for either of us, um, unless I get like 30 people to join me. And then I think I might get $5 off. So, or $5 back. I don't know how it works. Um, but yeah, otherwise on my website, I've got my full listing of, uh, in my full race calendar. I know there's easier ways to move around on that, but I don't 
really want to um, right now. Uh, but so I do have my race calendar set up here. Um, you can also see I'm doing the Riley's run with uh, performance running outfitters in the third ward. If you really want to join for that, it doesn't cost anything, but I don't know, usually it, uh, Wednesdays are Shake Shack and you get a free shake, maybe, or a free beer, free shake. Um, otherwise, I've got uh, just kind of a screenshot of my Excel workbook that has uh, everything in green I've signed up for, or in this case, already completed. Um, yellow is not signed up and interested. Red is conflicts with something else, but probably less interested than something else. What even is that? Ooh, I did sign up for that one. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Oh, no, 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 I didn't. So yeah, with these two, the uh, Bike to the Beat and then the Douseman Dare. Uh, Bike to the Beat is actually the same weekend as the Tour de Cure in St. Charles, Illinois. Um, so I will not be doing that one. The uh, Dodgeville is like on the complete other side of southern Wisconsin in southwestern. Um, so like it's not horribly, horribly far, but... I'd have to talk to the boss downstairs to see if she would be up for it, but that one would be a hundred miler. Um, and then stuff later on in the fall, it's most of it's still yellow because I just, the registration either isn't open yet in the case of the uh, Central Waters River Run in Amherst, a lot of fun. Uh, it also has a beer fest afterwards. Uh, they also... It's close by to Stevens Point, Wisconsin, which has like hotels and stuff. Uh, but yeah, ton of fun. It's like a two mile walk or five mile run, which you can walk to. Um, but yeah, uh, the run is chip timed. Uh, the Vets Day 10K, I think registration's open for that now or will be soon. And then the Turkey Trot in Appleton, um, registration's not open yet. Uh, but I am doing the Fox Cities half marathon, not the full. Uh, <laughs> I do know some people that are doing the full now this year. Uh, last year either did the 10K with me or the half, um, which is on Sunday. Or the Sunday of that weekend. Uh, the half is also on that Sunday. The 5K, 10K, kids, runs. Uh, it's like a whole event, the Fox Cities marathon weekend. Um, Really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Check it out. Uh, that one, I have my referral code written here, but I don't think I have it listed anywhere else. Uh, I'll try and work on that. Uh, my website is just like a constant work in progress. I do have blog posts. They're mostly just kind of like reviews. I did a few that were uh, like race recaps. Um, and I might do some more of those, but like with the reviews, um, it lets me kind of accompany my YouTube stuff and the stuff that I do for the Tech Insider Network, but do it in a much longer format um, and a red format too. And then also I can update it if I really want to. Um, this one I actually need to still work on editing the video for, uh, which I recorded in like end of September. I don't have this computer anymore. The parts went in here. So, um, oh, it's a cool computer though. Styling is, it grows on you. Um, but yeah, otherwise like, trying to write up things like, uh, this one's a newer one. Uh, wow, two views really breaking down the breaking breaking down the barriers to get that one out there um but yeah sometimes put in like different race advice my motivations um this one's probably one of my favorites that i kind of like wrote this one did like writing and oops that one too um i guess i never actually assigned it to one 
Um, anyways, yeah, the heavy runners thing and then the staying active at work. Um, I was still kind of from time to time popping into the office around that time, uh, but also just used a lot of my experiences from working in a professional office. You're sitting in your chair all day. Um, all of the advice in there is still applicable if you work from home, work hybrid. Uh, if you work in the office, try and bring comfy shoes. Uh, if you work from home, get, get some weights. Um, lift your computer up, you know, all sorts of different things, like get creative, um, try and make it so you're not just sitting in the same spot, um, fidget, um, preferably not in the office because that can tends to annoy people. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it's a huge work in progress, gear garage, that's just kind of like, uh, stuff I use and if I have links to them. Uh, the bike one was a bad example of that because, like, I don't have affiliate links to these bikes. Uh, definitely not this one. It says retired, but stolen. It, it's a way of retiring it. Uh, trade it in for this. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then Ruby, my road bike, has been featured a couple of times. Um, mostly because that's what I'd use Wift on. Uh, with my indoor bike trainer, and then also ride in races and events. Um, Gina here, my Turbo Vado, um, heavily for like bike commuting, getting to and from appointments, uh, just kind of cruising around. Yeah, the, the motor is nice. It's pedal assist only, uh, so you can't just hammer down throttle and go. You actually have to pedal. Um, you don't have to put down a lot of effort to actually really go if you have it turned all the way up. Uh, but also with it being a smart e-bike, you can connect it to an app and um, plot it out to, if you wanna go 70 miles, you can plug in, I wanna go 70 miles and it'll try and make it so your battery will last that long. Uh, but otherwise like fitness tech, swim gear, fitness tech actually has like, it's not totally built out. <laughs> Project name coming soon, uh, but yeah, so like if you click onto these things, it'll open up an affiliate link towards it. And uh, yeah, just with like a little description of why I like it. Or if you go to stuff I like, um, <laughs> socks. I love Swiftwick socks. Um, cycling work. I use them for running too. Um, but also the Flight XTR, my go to's for running, especially in the warmer months. But yeah, even all sorts of different stuff down here. Um, oh yes, I actually have links in here. Ooh, also Orson Alps. I also have a 15% off kit, A4C. So yeah, check through it. Uh, comment, like if you enjoyed this or the series or <laughs> subscribe. Um, Check out my other videos here. Um, yeah. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, again, I'm Mike with Accounting for Cycling. And I will hope to see you again next time. Uh, this should be a pretty regular, I think Tuesday, 5 o'clock is a good time. Uh, Zwift rides, still hoping for each weekend. Um, as it gets nicer, though, that might switch downside. But, yeah. All right.